If you are a Creo Parametric user, do yourself a favor and take a look at Onshape, which is PTC's other major CAD platform. The subscription is free and the training is free. In this video, we're going to take a look at five things that Creo Parametric users should know about Onshape. And the first one is Part Studios. Note that I'm saying a Part Studio and not Part Mode. One thing that you'll see throughout Onshape is that the developers took a look at CAD modeling and decided how can we reinvent this from the ground up to make it smarter. And so Part Studios is one method. If you take a look in my graphics area, I have three different components in here. They have different colors. If you take a look in my parts list, you can see these three different parts here. And so this isn't multi-body. This is actually three different parts created in the same environment. If you take a look at my features list, I have a total of 72 different features. You can't tell which ones belong to which different parts. It's just a matter of when you are creating different features, you can choose whether they are adding material, removing material, or creating a brand new part. Let me cancel out of that one. Probably the biggest mistake that users from traditional parametric CAD software make when starting with Onshape is that they will create one part per part studio and they're just losing a lot of the power. And one of the benefits of having this part studio is that it gets rid of that whole headache around managing external references. You don't have external references here. You're just using references from another part to create new parts where they are supposed to be and changes to one thing can update something else parametrically. If you're worried about unwanted changes, well, version control is built into Onshape. One thing to note is that you should avoid having multiple instances of a component in a part studio. That's not what a part studio is for. So for example, if I was to design a bolt in here, I would not want to create, say, four bolts that would go up here at the top. Okay, number two, grouping components. And this comes to assemblies. Let me jump over to a different tab in my document. You can think of your documents as a project that you are working on. And right now I am in an assembly. It's got no components in it. One thing you'll notice is that it doesn't have any default datum planes. But anyhow, let's start bringing in different components. I will choose the insert command and I can insert components from my current document, other documents or standard content. And we'll go into standard content in a few minutes. Anyhow, I have a number of different part studios in here. I'm going to expand the one that I was just in. And there are three different parts that were created in there. And I'm going to select the engine block and the engine cover. By the way, I'm not holding down the control key and the muffler. So I'm putting three different parts from this part studio in at the same time. Let me hit the check mark. And so I've got the components in the assembly. Let me make this a little bit wider. These symbols indicate that there are still degrees of freedom left. And so I want the engine block to be the anchor, the first component. I can right click on it and choose fix. And we have this little ground symbol next to it. But the other ones are not fixed. Those are parts that I designed in a part studio. They are in the right place to begin with. So I'm going to select the engine block and the engine cover and the muffler. Once again, I'm not holding down the control key. You have persistent selection in Onshape. And then I'm going to go to this command, which is the group command. And with the group command, I can create them, well, as a group. And they are going to move together. They're going to have sort of like a lock between them. So I'll hit the check mark. And now we no longer have those symbols next to the engine cover and the muffler in order to eliminate the degrees of freedom. So you don't have the traditional constraints that you're used to. And again, for these components that were designed in the same part studio, all I need to do is group them together a lot easier and faster. 
But let's take a look at how you bring in other different components. And in the third thing that we're going to take a look at, let's examine the concept of mate connectors. And again, this is a really big, huge difference for people who came, who come over from Creo Parametric or some other parametric CAD software. I'm going to insert a, another component and I'm going to insert it from the current document. Let me expand one of the other different part studios. And it just has one other part that I was working on. I'm going to click on it. And when I click on it, it brings it in at the origin. But I don't want this assembled at the origin. It's actually going to go on the top. So I'm just going to move it about over here and left click in order to drop it. That's good. Let me hit the check mark in order to close the insert dialog box. But now I want to place this on top of the engine block. If I was doing this in Creo Parametric, I'd probably have a coincident constraint, maybe some coincident constraints for the holes, and you know, just basically adding the constraints until can't move. In Onshape, it is a lot easier because of this concept of make connectors. And make connectors are like really versatile, very powerful coordinate systems. And so I'm going to start one of my mates, and this is going to be a fastened mates so that two components are going to move together. And for selecting what I'm mating together, we're going to use these mate connectors and mate connectors can be explicit, like you create it manually in a part, or you can use an implicit mate connector, which is sensed from the geometry. And so when I move my mouse over the cylinder, you see that little triad that's green and blue and red, and it's indicating the center of the top of the cylinder. That's one of the locations that I want to use for assembling the engine head. Let me select it. And then from the engine head, let me find what I want to use. Do I want to use that? I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, it's one of these um, ones over here. Hold on, let me make sure I get, I think it's this one. Let me click there. And so then it moves it into place. It puts these two different mate connectors on top of each other. And if they are wrong, I can do some other kind of, I can change to a different mate connector. I can add in different offsets. I can rotate around, but you've got these really versatile inferred coordinate systems that you can grab from existing geometry. I don't need to define them. And by just selecting one reference from the engine block and one reference from the engine head, that's all that I need in order to locate this in the assembly. If you take a look at the engine head, it didn't have that little sort of three-legged or three-pointed triad uh, next to it indicating that it has degrees of freedom. It is fully locked down. All right, now for number four, let's take a look at standard uh, content. So I'm going to go to the insert menu once again. And so let's say I want to put some different bolts or washers or different uh, components in here. Well, typically in Creo, you would create those different components. Maybe you would put them in a library. In Onshape, you have a bunch of standard content already at your disposal. And so in this case, I'm going to change from the category of washers, which I was using earlier. You can choose retaining rings, pins and studs, nuts, keys, or bolts and screws. Well, I need to put some different bolts in here. Let me rotate the model. And actually, before I do this, I'm going to cancel out. I need to figure out approximately how long I need the bolts to be in order to fasten this component to the engine block. Let me cancel out for a moment. Just show you how to do a quick measurement. I will just pick this surface and then rotate the model and pick this surface. Let me help zoom in a little bit in this surface. Just by picking those two different surfaces, it's telling me the distance between them. I did not have to enter into any kind of measurement operation. But now I know how long my fasteners need to be. Once again, let's go to insert and standard content. Here's the bolts and screws. Oh, I don't want ANSI. I want this to be ISO. 
And let's see for the size, we can click here and we can just like grab and it'll size and say, okay, M12 is the right size. And for the length from the drop down, let's say I could choose I want 40. And for placing them in here, there's this insert button, but you have the ability, and we can see this from the tooltip, we could pre-select edges or faces of holes and then hit insert, or we could pre-select planar faces or we could click insert and then drag them right into the model. So let's try one of these pre-selection methods. I'm just going to select this surface and then hit the insert button. And based on the surface, it's guessing that I wanted to put five fasteners in there. There's one in the middle. Oh, I didn't actually want that one. Let me hit the check mark to get out of here and I can hover my mouse over to figure out which is the one that I don't want right mouse click on it and then let's find the delete command oh there it is right there at the bottom and so that one is out of there you can see that it also automatically inferred some mate connectors and it's showing them on the computer screen i'm going to use the keyboard shortcut k in order to turn off their display there's also a little circle where the origin is i'm going to hide the origin as well so Inserting standard content is another big advantage you have when you are working inside of Onshape. And let me go back to maybe this view. And now for the last one, I'm going to go over to a different document. Let me go to my Onshape button. And let's see, recently opened. Let me grab this one. I'm opening up a documents from one of the free training classes that you can take and that's because i want to show you another one of the big differences which is the approach to what creo parametric users know as family tables with family tables you define the different columns that you're going to have what you're going to vary so for example you could have different dimensions you could have different features in a part you could have different components in an assembly. You could have different parameters. You specify what you're going to vary, and then you're going to create rows in that table for all the different variations, and then you're going to fill in all the data. Well, once again, Onshape takes a completely different approach to managing what they call configurations. Configurations is like a family table except you're not defining the entire family. You're just defining what can vary in the different variations. And if you take a look in my left-hand panel, here at the top we have configurations. And so this is already set up with three different things that can vary. We have a bearing style and there's a drop-down list where we can choose from three different choices. We also have a dimensional value that we can change we also have something that we can toggle on or off. The way that you set up your different configurations in Onshape is with the configuration panel over on the left. Right now I'm on the configurations tab. And so we have our different bearing styles. The bearing styles are controlled by a drop down list. If we take a look at the bottom here, we have the ability to configure different list that of things that can vary we also have in this case different diameters that are used in various different places this little hashtag indicates that it is a variable and by changing that variable it changes a bunch of things in different parts and here we have our check boxes for whether something appears or not in the different variations and so let me collapse that and I'll just show you how easy it is to make different variations. So right now we're on standard. I could go to flanged and it is doing some calculations. And now the outside part has a flange on it or we could change to retaining ring. Let's see what that variation is. Okay, we have a groove in there for the retaining ring. And then we have the shaft diameter this is configured with some different limits in here. So let me choose, let me choose a weird number, 1.268, and then hit the enter key. 
And normally you wouldn't have some kind of weird number like that. You probably have something more normal like 1.5 or 1.75. But the way that you do configuration series, you don't have to set up the different predefined values that something can change between. And let's see, we also have this option here for sealed, so I can check that. Now we have a seal that is located in there. And so those are just three of the different things that are set up in this particular assembly model that can be varied in the different options. And sometimes there are situations where you want pre-configured variations. You can still do that. I and mean, this is the easy way of do, doing different variations and managing them in Onshape. But there is another tab for configured assembly properties. And so someone wanted to set up some predefined variations where they have a certain bearing style, a certain diameter, some are sealed, some are not. And they have the different descriptions and part numbers for those different variations. So there's a lot of flexibility in managing your configurations, or again, the approach to family tables that you have in Onshape, where again, it just doesn't force you into creating this big, massive table where you've got to enter in all the different values. So there you have it, just five different things for Creo Parametric users to know about Onshape if they want to start playing around in that software i highly recommend that you do again it is browser based so you can use it on just about any computer you can use it on a tablet i've even used it on my phone so give it a shot